Hello, my name is Ramon Nieni and in this video I'm going to explain to you our web motion which is our basic interface to communicate to our Xenax servo controller. Here on the setup I have a Xenax 75 V8S connected to a ELAX and with my computer I'm using the TCP IP HTML5 interface to be connected. As you see here, everything's all right, everything's green. If you want to know how to initially connect to it, I recommend you our video, the initial setup. So we straight up go into operations. The first thing you see on the bottom below is the so-called status bar. We have the position in increment or microns. We have a motor which gets recognized automatically. Then we have the reference, if it's done or not. Right now it's still pending. We have a status bar about our inputs and outputs, as well as we see the status of the motor, which is power off right now. We see the temperature and we see the I force, which is a value for the force. In this window, the position with soft limit position is just to give you an, an limitation in the software if you don't want to use the full stroke or if you want to just narrow it down so that you don't crash, this is a soft limit which can be set. Be aware, this setting is a global setting, so if you set it here, instead of driving to your desired position, if it uh, reaches the soft limit, it will show you a warning, warning number 40. We just leave it right now with 0 to 50,000, so we can use the full stroke. Next one is the speed as well as the acceleration. Be aware that the scale is not linear, but logarithmic, so that we can have the full range of what the motor can do. Then we have the S-curve. The S-curve is just a rounding of the acceleration curve. I show you a little picture on how that looks like. Default is 20%, which means first 10%, and the last 10% of the curve will get rounded out. It costs a little bit of speed though. And the next one is the speed override. The speed override is a global setting to push down the speed. So you can, for example, type in 50. So uh, the acceleration and the speed will go down by 50. So you can see the slow motions if you need to. Also, the S-curve and the speed override are global settings. So be aware of that. If you change them here, they might affect your program. Then we have the moves. We have a go away, which is a relative motion. We have repeat reverse, which is a back and forth motion. Then we have here a little time stamp, which just shows you the time the last motion took. Then we have a weight reverse in milliseconds. The weight reverse is just the weight between the repeat and reverse. And we have the go position, which is a absolute movement. Then here we have the reference. That's the first thing I'll do. The motor will reference, go to a position and then stand there. You see the position will go to zero. If I move it or push it, you see the current which is controlling the motor as well as the position toggle a bit. Now we could move with a go away, for example 20,000. It moves very slowly, about an inch. So I'm going to go up with speed and acceleration. Now it's a bit faster. So if I go away, it goes down. It will go down again. Now it won't. Warning 40 because it reached the limit, the soft limit or here the full stroke, which is the warning. If I go back to position zero and do a go position to 20,000, for example, it won't change the position because we're doing an absolute motion. Now we're going to do a repeat reverse motion for 10 millimeters. You see, it goes back and forth, it hits a bit. If we do a weight reverse, it waits and goes back up and down. So the repeat reverse as well as the weight reverse we usually use with the motion diagram so that we can set the motor very good so that it reaches the position perfectly. Go position zero. So that's basically the by click. We can control the motor, we can stop a motion, we can power it on or power quit the motor as well. With the by command line we have just the functionality of all the ASCII commands we have. You'll find the ASCII commands uh, in the manual, which is down in the description. It's on page 41. For example, G5000, which means go to position 5000. And this command now would be affected by the S-curve 
as well as the speed override. So that's why they are global settings. By force tech is our unique force tech force measuring technology. Here right now we're using force tech basic because I don't have a signal tech or a load cell included. So I'm using the motor current. If I change to load cell, I would have a different interface. And the first thing you want to do is the force calibration. Uh, I'll just do it right away. The motor will drive down and up and measure all the forces that are occurring. You'll also recognize it down here with the I force. It measures it and then it flattens it out. It should be close to zero. Uh, just to give you an example here, I have a Rotex which is not connected to a controller, just as a way to it. And if I do a demo mode with on and calibration active, which is basically balancing it out, you'll see what's going on. It's really floating the motor as it should. And as you see now with the force on the left corner, it's always zero because it's trying to float it out. So I'll do power on again. Here I have a little command line as well. I can go zero. Then here we have a limit force, which is also a global limitation of the force. I'll give um, two amps. The force will be limited. And you'll see when the force limit is active, the motor will not have a deviation error. It will just push. And as we reach the force, which is limited to, it will give you a warning. I'm demonstrating it right now. So now you'll see it's limited to two amps which is basically about 500 grams and it's not doing an error but just going back to a stop motion go back up so that's basically the by force tech we have another video where we go in depth with the force tech the force tech allows you to control the force to measure the force to push with the force as you've seen here and you have a really good control over it we also have the Force Tech Pro. We can add in a load cell and then we go into the millinewtons using our Signatech and Force Tech Pro technology. Next one is the motion diagram. The motion diagram is just used for inspection. What's going on? What's actually going on? We can, for example, if I'll do a motion, go 50,000. I'll do a start recording. And now we'll see how the motion is done. You could control everything basically in here. It's always used in the setup, how we go into position. You could even save a file and store it for later on to look at it or to include it in Excel, like a, a CSV file include, or you could open a file. Now we're going into application.